I'm just going to uh, introduce Marty Jackley here. We got Jerry Miller. Marty Jackley, the, the AG, Attorney General. Jerry Miller with the uh, State Attorney here in Union County. And anyway, uh, just I'm going to kind of give you some a little bit of information, then I'm going to turn over to Mr. Jackley. But uh, we, I received a call here of a individual that came across a vehicle that was submerged in the Bruley Creek, which is north of here, a few miles uh, off of 310th Street. Um, upon my arrival, uh, there, the vehicle was submerged. You can see the undercarriage of a vehicle and four tires sticking out of the water. Um, basically, we get a hold of the Division of Criminal Investigations to come in. We got uh, escalate, uh, excavator, uh, a tow truck. We basically attempted to get the vehicle out of the water. Um, the vehicle is in pretty rough shape. We weren't able to remove it out of the water, but we were able to raise it some. Um, we decided to uh, leave it where it was so to keep it intact as best possible. We have identified uh, the plate on the vehicle, and I'll let Marty talk about that. But uh, we're in the process of esca excavating material out of the vehicle now and uh, determine what, what it is, in fact, we have. Go ahead, Marty. Thank you, Sheriff. What we know is that on May 29th, 1971, uh, two teenagers, juniors at Vermillion, uh, disappeared. Uh, Pam Jackson and Cheryl Miller. We know that on the evening uh, involved that at 9.30 they went to see uh, Miller's grandmother. We know that after about 9.30 when they left they were driving Miller's grandfather's 1960 uh, vehicle. Uh, that they left, they were with other classmates heading to a party by the old uh, gravel pit. We know that a missed turn was taken, that that was the last that they were seen, believed to be heading uh, northward over by the, the gravel pit. We have been able to uh, ascertain from the vehicle that's been found in the excavation so far uh, that via the license plate as well as a hubcap that it would be that Studebaker uh, Lark uh, 1960. Uh, but we can't say anything more about that particular vehicle. Uh, we have had an opportunity to talk uh, at the scene with family members. Uh, that, that is a discussion that I'll keep private. Uh, we do believe uh, that obviously this case is very important and then certainly with the license plate number uh, that we believe it, it has to do with respect to that disappearance of Cheryl Miller and Pam Jackson but we're not going to say any further details until we've had an opportunity, as the sheriff's indicated, to excavate the vehicle, uh, to take it in for uh, forensic testing, uh, to ascertain more information. Certainly would make ourselves available for any specific questions you have, but that's generally speaking, uh, we can't talk about evidence uh, at this point other than uh, the license plate, uh, as well as the hubcap would give an indication of the 1960 Studebaker Lark. Uh, we have talked to uh, one set of relatives that were at the scene. Uh, they wanted an opportunity to see. We had a brief discussion with them there, uh, and that's really all I can say at this point. Are you going to leave the vehicle in there or try to take it out at some point? We are in the process, as the sheriff indicated, of excavating the vehicle. Uh, certainly that vehicle is believed to have been in there about 42 years. Um, we uh, had recent high water levels followed by all-time low levels, which has made this possible, the discovery. Uh, certainly, it being in the water that long, uh, we want to be careful with it so that we can make sure that we preserve as much evidence as possible uh, so that we can uh, perhaps bring closure to the family uh, of this matter that happened back in May of 1971. Marty, how far is this vehicle from the farm that was searched by the cold case here a few years ago? I'm not going to get into too many details other than I will say that uh, the vehicle is approximately a half mile from the believed destination. You may recall that I talked about that they had left the Miller's grand, uh, grandmother's at the Vermilion Hospital, believed to be going uh, to a party at the gravel pit, and it's about a uh, half mile or less from that location. Have you interviewed Dave Flippin at all today? 
I'm not going to comment about uh, any specifics on evidence or uh, anything that we're going. I mean, this case at this point is not about him. It's about trying to discover uh, two teenagers and find out what, what happened from there. Family members that you talked to, was it family members on for both girls? And you say who those family members were in terms of relation? Um, I will say that, uh, all I will say at this point, it was the Jackson family side, um, and I won't say anything further. Who, who discovered this? Was it, I mean, why is it 42 years later now? I mean, somebody could have stumbled upon this at any time. Was somebody down by the river doing some searching, or what was going on? Without going into specifics, I will tell you that the sheriff's office received a call from an individual that was down there uh, that had seen uh, something out of the ordinary. The individual was generally familiar with the case, and the sheriff's office followed up uh, and made the discovery. Uh, and what time was the, uh, was the call? Without getting into too many specifics, but today the, uh, the discovery was this morning. Um, I would have received the call a little bit before lunch. Uh, and I know that uh, this has been a cooperative effort between the sheriff's office uh, and state authorities, and we want it to remain the same. How, uh, how much time has been spent actually excavating? And when you talk about trying to pull the car out, it sounds like now you now you have a different strategy. How long, how long have you been working with something? can't get into specifics on uh, what we're doing at the scene. We've closed off the scene. I know some of you had been out at the scene. It's closed off. and, and, and uh, appreciate the respect that you're given for the scene so that we can allow, uh, as has happened, the family members that wanted to be down there to see that and an opportunity for law enforcement to do the best job that we can to preserve as much evidence as we can for, again, a car that, that's been uh, submerged underwater, I believe, for 42 years. How large of an area is being, uh, well, I guess, cordoned off, so to speak? Uh, and is there, is there a search going on in that area as well as I don't want to go into specifics of what law enforcement is doing other than to say that I was personally at the scene with the sheriff and impressed by the work that law enforcement is doing in cooperation. Uh, things are being preserved. Uh, they're doing the best job that they can under the circumstances. I say under the circumstances, obviously, you can read weather reports like I can read that there may be some rain coming. We're trying to work uh, efficiently to preserve as much evidence as we can. In terms of I'm not going to go into specifics of the evidence until we've had an opportunity to fully excavate the vehicle uh, and go through that evidence and do whatever forensic testing may be necessary to confirm that. Do you have some idea how long the excavation process would take? I don't at this time. When exactly did the passerby find the car? Pardon me? When exactly did the passerby find the car? Was it this morning? I'm not, I'm not going to go into specifics on, on evidentiary matters and names. It's been several years since we've heard anything. To some level, when you have missing teenagers, it's always active. I mean, certainly calls come in on various cases uh, every once in a while. A case will develop. I mean, we've seen it here in South Dakota in the Aquash case uh, and in other cases where things have developed. So, you know, certainly, uh, you know, it's always important when you have a missing person. In this instance, we have two missing teenagers with unanswered questions. Uh, what may come out of today's events is we may have some further questions answered. But we need to give it time and we need to have the opportunity for law enforcement as well as the forensic experts to do their job to preserve the evidence and give us as much indication as they can. Without going into specifics, can you characterize the family's reaction to the news? You know, I would say that they were appreciative of the work that was going into it and the care that was going into it. Uh, but beyond that, I, I keep those conversations private. When the vehicle is removed, where will it be taken? Will it be taken to the crime lab in the pier? Um, we don't know for sure because it hasn't been removed, but certainly that is being discussed. Uh, we have in pier uh, the facility uh, available to house it inside to preserve that evidence. But at this point, no final decisions have been made. When the agencies were out at the scene, you said state authorities what? Just from what I personally viewed, of course, the sheriff's office, uh, the DCI, the highway patrol, the DOT, uh, um, I believe there were also city officials there. Which city? 
Um, I was with a former city official, so um, from Vermilion. I'm also aware that uh, the Vermilion and Clay County authorities, and so it was a cooperative effort between local law enforcement. There was, of course, fire department there uh, and state authorities.